In this session, I will continue from the previous Python session that talked about inheritance. There is a difference between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. When it comes to multiple inheritance, the child class can receive class variables, attributes, and methods from more than one parent class. Therefore, Python allows us to inherit multiple classes. Multi-level inheritance refers to a derived class inheriting another derived class. In other words, it's when a child class inherits a parent class and that parent class also has a parent. I'm going to show you the difference between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance plus demo the method resolution order. Here's a diagram of multiple inheritance. We see the child class at the bottom inherits from parents one and parent two. For multi-level inheritance, we see there are two child classes and two parent classes. The class at the top is only a parent, while the class in the middle is a child and a parent. However, the bottom class is only a child. In the demo, I'm going to combine multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. The IDE has an employee class, which is a parent. Developer and tester are child classes that inherit the employee class. Now, I will create a class called Automation Engineer. The Automation Engineer class will have two parent classes. It has Developer and Tester as the parents. Write Pass so there is no body. At this point, Automation Engineer represents multi-level inheritance that inherits multiple parents. Let me show you the MRO, which means method resolution order. It is the order when Python looks for a method in a class hierarchy. There are two ways to see the MRO. The first way, start by writing the subclass name Automation Engineer dot MRO. Then print the types. When I run, before I run, notice the order shows developer, then tester. Now, when I run, we see automation engineer. Next is developer, then tester. After tester, we see the employee class, which is the parent class. Last is object. Object is the parent class of all classes. Therefore, it will always be last. We know the employee class is the parent. But if I check the MRO, the type will show in the console object. It still shows object, although we did not specify a parent because object is the superclass of all parents. Now, let me add some methods to show how Automation Engineer inherits from both parents. For developer, I'm going to maximize. And for developer, we write DEF to define the develop applications method, pass in self. Then return employed to develop. For tester, let's write the same thing, but let's name this test underscore applications. Pass in self, then return employed to test. Now, Customize the Automation Engineer class by creating our initializer. And to create the initializer, we write DEF, two underscores, init, then pass in self. Now the attributes, let's just copy those from the developer and tester classes. 
name, imp, num, and lang. And I'm going to paste. Now, we also need to get the web mobile attributes from the tester class and paste that one. Now, we have the option of writing super or the parent class name, like I mentioned in the previous session, to call the super class. I'm going to start with the parent class, which is developer. Two underscores init. And for developer, when we call the parent class name, we must pass in self. And I'm going to use name, imp, num, salary, and also lang. But I will erase web mobile because that's for the Chester class. And for this, let's write super. Now, in the your production code, I doubt if you will write developer and super mix it like that. You may use one or the other. But for now, I'm going to write name, imp, num, salary, and I also pass in web mobile. And when we use super, we do not need to write the keyword self. Before I call each method from the super classes, let me show you how the second way will look up the chain of classes using the method resolution order. You will see how the order in which we declare each parent class makes a difference. If I change the parent class to be tester, then developer, you're going to see how the MRO will also update. Now, we use the second way by writing the help function and pass in automation engineer. Print the types, run as expected. We see the, met the method resolution order. The method resolution order shows automation engineer, tester, developer, employee, then object. We also see the initializer method defined in the automation engineer right here. Plus the methods from tester, test applications, from developer, develop applications, and both methods from the employee class. Add bonus to salary and get employee info method. At the bottom, we see data and other attributes inherited from employee, and those are bonus and total employee class variables. Last, let me show you how the automation engineer class can call the methods from both parent classes. I'm going to start by writing automation equals automation engineer. Name will be automation Joe. Employee number, four. Salary, 105000 Web mobile, let's write mobile. And the language, will it be Python? Now, when I use the reference automation and type automation.app, we see both methods. The first method shows develop applications from the developer class. And the second method shows test applications from the tester class. Automation develop applications. Let's also print Automation Joe by writing automation dot name. Add a comma. And I'm going to also print the values. And let's do the same thing for the test applications by changing develop to test. And when I run, we see Automation Joe employed to develop and Automation Joe employed to test. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next session.